Now, I know I didn't hype as much as you wanted me to, bastard, but honestly, with every video that you dropped, each one left me less and less motivated on wasting my time with a response, because as I said, there was no story being told, man. How many times can you come out here, call someone trash, tell them you're going to whoop their ass and remind them that you have a championship and war is so awesome? You may have changed your name a little bit, but you're the same bastard you were in the past. You don't understand the intricate details that go into this business. Now, when I came back to BTB by myself, I did so with a point to prove. Because when I left, I did so with the longest running undefeated streak for someone just starting in this company. Just as well as leaving before I could become the champion that I know I can be here and beyond the belts. So tonight on Battle Dome, facing off against the Native States champion and taking a victory from him will skyrocket me right back to getting that goal. And every blow that I land on you will represent the impact I'm going to make here at BTB. Every submission hold that stretches your joints and limbs to their limits will also signify how much I will cripple anyone and everyone that steps in my way and tries to keep me from that goal, especially if they're a champion. And once I finally connect that springboard knee right to your temple, it will not only daze you, it will not only immobilize you to set up for what you already know is coming, because you've experienced it twice before. But hopefully it will also knock some sense into your brain. Because it doesn't matter who you have aligned yourself with. It doesn't matter what championship you hold. Because your sole standard of this business is back. Which means the bastard's kryptonite is here and present. And then once I finally wrap my arm around your throat, cinch in the grapevines and wait for your eyes to roll in the back of your head. It will only be a matter of time before my arm is raised in victory and your sole standard of this business has just then picked up a win on the Native States Champion, which will help me prove that I am exactly what I say I am. And that is a future champion here in BTB. <laughs> you know, it's funny. You've learned how to raise your voice. You brag about your accomplishments, and you keep telling everybody about the faction that you're a part of. You sound a lot like me when I was here before. But then again, I don't really blame you for wanting to be like me. BTB Battle Dome The Bastard versus the Standard <laughs> I've been looking forward to this standard because I've been to your little building twice this week and I'm getting ready to go back for the third time so I really hope you're here tonight that way I can beat the ever living hell out of your punk ass because you run your mouth an awful lot. Oh, you can't beat me. I'm the best when I get you. When you get me in the ring, I'm going to toss you around like a rag doll. I'm going to hit you with this spike heart punch. Then when I throw your little midget ass in the air and drop you on your big dumb ass head. With that earth shattering brain buster. You know the rest, boy. Come on, Jimmy. Get your punk ass up. Jimmy, are you done? Uh, have you had enough of the bastard? Huh? I thought LOD 
was the guys to beat. Because like I said, baby, war. Look what I got, BTB. After I come in little Jimmy's building and beat his punk ass, I got his little hammer. And you know what? Let me bring back some vivid memories for him and that crew he was with. Let me bring back another memory for the BTB when they spit in our faces. You see this hammer? You see what's behind me? Did you hear that? BTB, that's the end of you standard. So the next time you want to step to the face of the bastard, you better bring a little. Fallen. What a worthy name for two individuals who have fallen so far down in the ranks here in the BTB. <laughs> I mean, you have the immortal 24 champion Titan, who's on borrowed time, whose borrowed time is coming to an end at Hellbound. And then you have the cryptic one, one of three men who hold victories over Omega. The man who claims that he has Omega's soul in his tree of agony, but what he has in actuality is Omega's conscience. And Omega without a conscience is the most dangerous thing running around here in the BTB. See, I see the fear in your eyes because you realize that you have to go up against Omega Elite. As you walk down to the ring, I see the fear because you don't know what we're gonna do to you. You don't know what we have planned for you. And those things that you dream about, those fears that you dream about, those nightmares that you dream, aren't even on scale for what we're gonna do when you get into the ring with the most lethal tag team the BTB has ever seen. So you boys continue. You boys continue to hold hope to think that you know what you're gonna get yourself into. But when you look across the ring at us, I know what's going to happen. Lane Kelly, you're going to charge at us with no fear because you're a little bit of a lunatic. But the cryptic one, when you look into Omega's eyes, when you look into Fury's eyes and you realize that we are not the men that you thought we were, you'll freeze up. BTB. Omega Elite gets called out by the Ultraviolet Club. You call out the greatest tag team in the history of BTB? Well, we stomp down to that ring like the greatness that we are. We get under those ropes. We grab a hold of Titan first thing. And we hit him right off the bat with the rise to ruin. And then I hit him with the oblivion sanction. And then Omega hits him with the Omega drop. And there lays Titan. Broken. Bloody. Battered. Now I look over at the cryptic one. And he hasn't moved. As a matter of fact, he has a smile upon his face. Smiling at the brokenness that is his partner, Titan. I see that look in his eye, and I know that look. It is a look that I have locked down deep inside myself for a long time. It's like looking at two sides of the same coin. And this is the darkness that I've tried to keep locked in me that I've tried to keep away from you all, it will not stay down. It will not stay in it. BTV, something wicked your way comes.
Sherry. What the f- look forward to beating you two senseless. I look forward to beating you till there's nothing left but a pile of bones and a few organs. And those organs won't be inside the rib cage. No, no, no. They'll be wrapped around your throat with your jaw open as you will be screaming for help as there will be nothing left of what we've done to you tonight. So you may be saying to yourself, oh, this ain't the soldier from hell. No, you're right, this ain't the soldier. This is a very mad fallen angel. And this fallen angel is looking to make an example out of two jokers who don't deserve to be in my presence. So tonight, when my hand is wrapped around your throat, I want you to think of one thing. That one moment in time that made you the most happy, that made you the happiest you've ever been. I want you to think about that. And I want you to think about that as it slips away while I choke the life out of you. So tonight, my knee will be making a hole in your spinal, and it won't be one that stops halfway through your head, no. Tonight, a man made me angry yesterday, and that man inspired me to hurt the both of you. So tonight, my knee will find its way through your skull. That means win one end and out the other. But tonight it doesn't end with a knee strike. Oh no, it doesn't, gentlemen. You're the World Tag Team Champions. Them deserves to go out better than what I am giving you. So tonight, 
When I hoist you over my head, Omega, and I put you in the tombstone position, I want you to think of one thing. What are you going to do when you get to purgatory? So when I throw you out and knock you unconscious, when your face hits the mat, everybody will realize that they don't need to mess with me anymore. And the same goes for you, Fury. Because while you're both unconscious, me and the behemoth will have our final laugh of the night. When I put you on my shoulders, one by one, surely, then his boot will connect with both your temples, one by one. Then I'll throw you over my head, and I will slam you with a one-way ticket to hell. Which means we call this the path of the fallen, gentlemen. A path that you are going to be traveling on here tonight. A path, meaning the behemoth, I'm more than welcome to show you. Because the path of the fallen is for men who will fall from grace and deserve to fall from grace. Let the bloodbath begin, gentlemen. Ooh. Holy crap. Ooh. Now, see, that's for your one of two or three of your 39,000 gimmicks that you use, David. See, Babel, you want to call myself a conceited out? All in the honor of Mr. Unentertainment. That's cool, David, because, see, you got enough gimmicks to keep me and Conceited busy for probably the next ten years. The problem is, not one of them was a contender. And now you have the we. Well, that's cool. Not really, because, see, I started that a long time ago when I came up with the idea of the Elite Dynasty and formed we as the Elite Dynasty. So, once again, not only did you run and steal somebody else's gimmick from somewhere else. Then you also borrowed a page of old school, which that's good, because you know, me and Conceited, we do set the bar here. We are what everybody wants to be here, including you, David. And what you want to be is a champion, like Conceited, or like I used to be a two-time Brass Knuckles champion, and the first time I got it, I whooped your ass for it. So, let's be blunt, and let's be real. Because that's what old school does, and a lot of people here don't like that. David, the Bray Wyatt gimmick is dead. He can do it, you can't. And the name of whatever your character is, you know what I call you? I call it Azriel. And you know who Azriel is? He was the cat for Gargamel in the Smurfs. And see, when we all get done listening to your promo, we're like the Smurfs because we're choking ourselves and turning blue. So David, let me tell you how it's going to work. Now, because you called us out and we just whipped your ass right here at Battle Dome, where the two of us don't even belong because we're above and beyond it. We're top tier talent, man. We're on the main event card. You wouldn't know what that is, David. But what we're going to do is we're going to put you to sleep for a little while. Make sure you never ever get a world title shot because he conceded he's going to keep that world heavyweight title. And then I'm going to go on and defeat that guy, Glenn, for the national promo title. And then we'll send you a 8 by 10 of the two of us holding our belts and showing you what real promo artists are all about. And as Conceited would say, David, I really did think you knew. Knew to shut your mouth. Old school. It's Conceited. I'm sorry. This is going to be my last message. Send prayers to my family. I'm surrounded by bad David Babel gimmicks. Oh no, there's one old school. It's the Undertaker gimmick. Wait, wait, he's cutting a promo on me. But the music's too loud, dong. And his voice is too low, it's too dark. I don't know what he's saying. Wait, old school, there's another one. Oh my god, it's the happy gimmick. He's cutting another promo, old school, but... It's really bad. No one can understand this character. Nobody's going to follow or like him. <laughs> oh, wait, there's the final one. It's it, it's the weak gimmick, old school. It's the weak gimmick. It's okay. Let me let, let me take the mask off the weak gimmick. Oh, old school, it's okay. 
It's what we known all along. It's complete. Wait, wait, what's going on? He's, he's, he's handing me something. Oh my god, it's a letter. Oh, it's a Mr. Entertainment fan club membership, and he's Mr. E's only fan left. Ah! Oh, oh, thank God. I woke up. That was a complete disaster. How is that guy even in BTB? Let me just do a check. Ah, yes. Still perfect and handsome. You need to stop bugging us, Dave. You need to stop disturbing, conceited, and old school. You think we don't have anything better to do than to show up at Battle Dome? Battle Dome? Give me a break. I'm the world champion. Where's my belt, Carney? I'm the world champion. I don't need to show up on a show that's for guys who feel that they don't get any recognition around here. I get it while you're here, so I'm going to open up the book. I'm not going to even show you a book. I'm not going to grab it, even though it's two feet from me. But I'm going to rip open that cover page, destroy pages 1 to 73, and I'm not going to read the ending. You know why I'm not going to read the ending, Babel, of your fable? Because I already know how it ends. Dave, the antagonists come in, and you get suffocated by the beautiful beard and stabbed in the back by the super sexy Canadian sword. Because it's etched in stone here at BTB. David, you got the two guys that are running the empire. So drop the superstar act and go back to just being a fan and watch what we do. Because it's perfection, David. Don't you understand that? Now you do. Take the away. <laughs> Tonight, two men enter into a world they do not understand. A world of darkness. A world where infection does not last very long. For old school and conceited, you have placed your fates in my hands. Cause tonight Inyetta makes his appearance known. You will feel fear like you've never felt it before. I take over the mind, body, and soul of the prodigal son. And when it's all said and done, two helpless, infectious souls look up at their cure. It will be then that the BTB is on notice that Yinetta has arrived. And once I have done my damage, we, we will provide BTB with the direction of our cure. So old school, conceited, tonight for Battle Dome, let the cleansing begin. Tonight, a new chapter, a new beginning in BTB starts with the cleansing of your infection. Be prepared, gentlemen, because the fun is only yet to begin.